The F-111 Aardvark was the U.S. Air Force's premier strike aircraft for the majority of the Cold War. It served in practically every conflict from Vietnam forwards until it was replaced by the F-15E Strike Eagle. It also served strategic air command in a limited role as a strategic bomber. But what made the F-111 great? Did the United States truly lose any capability by retiring it? The F-111 was one of the earliest joint service aircraft meant to fulfill both the U.S. Air Force's requirement for a swing-wing strike bomber and the U.S. Navy's requirement for a long-range interceptor. The F-111 was built around two powerful yet fuel-efficient TF-30 turbofan engines with new afterburner technology. The fuselage could accommodate bomb loads of up to 31,000 pounds and fuel for missions up to 2,500 miles long with external tanks adding another 1,000 miles. The large plane weighed 20 tons empty, or more than twice that loaded. The designers of the F-111 faced a challenge. They needed a plane that could fly at very high speeds, but still take off or land on a short runway. Using smaller wings would create less drag, allowing the aircraft to fly faster, but also create less lift, requiring the aircraft to achieve higher speeds before takeoff, in turn necessitating a longer runway. For example, the other supersonic fighter bomber of the era, the F-105 Thunder Chief, had very small wings and required airstrips over a mile long for takeoff, limiting which airfields it could operate from. The F-111's designers adopted a new technology of variable geometry or swing wings. These permitted the wings to swing out during takeoff to generate maximum lift and would tuck inward mid-flight to achieve higher speeds. The F-111 was the first of several major designs that used the technology. The two-man crew sat side by side in a cockpit pod. They needed to escape. A rocket boosted the pod upward, which then floated to the ground on a parachute, just like a space capsule. A key innovation was the F-111's revolutionary new terrain following radar, which mapped the ground directly in front of the plane and then automatically adjusted the flight path to avoid a collision. This allowed F-111s to fly as low as 200 feet above the surface and make precise adjustments at high speeds without crashing, even when flying at night or in bad weather conditions. The F-111's talent for hunting in darkness, nose close to the ground, was what earned it the appellation Aardvark. Early F-111s did show promise, capable of flying over the speed of sound at Mach 1.2 at low altitude, or more than double that, Mach 2.5 at high altitude, all the while requiring only a 2,000-foot runway to land. It was the first tactical aircraft to cross from the United States to Europe without mid-air refueling. However, the F-111's design was biased in favor of the Air Force's specifications. The carrier-based interceptor version, the F-111B, performed abominably in trials, struggling to exceed Mach 1. The expensive force compromise that was the naval version was finally scrapped, leaving everyone millions of dollars poorer. Many of the more promising design elements of the F-111B made it over to the F-14 Tomcat, however. F-111s participated in the Gulf War, Operation Desert Storm, in 1991. During Desert Storm, F-111Fs completed 3.2 successful strike missions for every unsuccessful one, better than any other U.S. strike aircraft used in the operation. The group of 66 F-111Fs dropped almost 80% of the war's laser-guided bombs, including the penetrating bunker buster GBU-28. The F-111s were credited with destroying more than 1,500 Iraqi tanks and armored vehicles. Their use in the anti-armor role was dubbed tank blinking. The F-111 remained in service with the Australian Air Force until 2010, where it was affectionately known as the Pig. Starting with a batch of 24 F-111Cs received in 1973, the Australians acquired an additional 15 FB-111s and 4 F-111As. Though never used in combat, the F-111s gave Australia the ability to project military force across the vast distances of the Pacific Ocean, enhancing its diplomatic clout. Pigs were the pride of Australian air shows, where they frequently performed a maneuver in which fuel was dumped and ignited with the afterburners, known as the dump and burn. Australia upgrades its F-111s to use anti-shipping missiles 
and converted four into reconnaissance aircraft. Due to their high operating costs, however, they were finally replaced by 24 F-18F Super Hornets. While the F-111 has been retired, a similar aircraft remains in use today. The Russian Sukhoi Su-24 Fencer was conceived shortly after the F-111 and is remarkably similar in appearance and roll down to the swing wings. Not quite the aardvarks equal in terms of range, speed, or weapons load, nearly three times more Su-24s were produced and over 300 serve on today in various World Air Forces. They've been actively used in combat over Syria, Chechnya, Libya, Afghanistan, and Ukraine. A Russian Su-24 attacking Syrian rebels was shot down in 2015 by a Turkish F-16, causing a major diplomatic incident. 563 F-111s of all variants were built. After the F-111A, the F-111D and E models upgraded the Aardvark's electronics and engine inlets and increased the thrust of the engines. Another variant, the FB-111, was designed as a strategic bomber with improved engines, stretched two feet longer to accommodate additional fuel. Seventy-five of these served in strategic air command units. The F-111C was sold exclusively to Australia. It incorporated a mixture of design elements of the FB-111 and the F-111E. The definitive F-111F sported engines with 35% more thrust, upgraded radar, and a PAVTAC infrared targeting pod that allowed the crew to identify targets on the ground and hit them with precision-guided munitions. Starting in the mid-1970s, 42 F-111As were converted into unarmed EF-111A Raven electronic jamming platforms at a cost of $1.5 billion. The EF-111's key system was an ALQ-99E jamming pod that emitted radiation that scrambled radars in the vicinity, permitting entire formations of aircraft to pass in its wake undetected. When active, the jammer's current literally caused the hairs on the crew's heads to stand as it crackled through the plane. Thus, the Raven was known as the Spark Vark to its pilots. The EF-111 is distinguishable by the receiver pod on the tail fin. The F-111 was in service with the USAF from 1967 through 1998. The FB-111s were operated by Strategic Air Command from 1969 before the conversion to F-111G and transferred to Air Combat Command until their retirement in 1993. 